This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Find out more later in the video. Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at ways to declutter and modernize the Windows 10 experience. Now to me and I'm sure many others, Windows 10 feels very cluttered. There's lots going on on the taskbar and in the start menu, there's lots of legacy programs installed behind the scenes and there's lots of weird defaults that Windows sets that personally I don't think should be default and would like to change and in fact always change when I set up a new version of Windows 10. So I figured why not do a video uh, detailing my steps, the things that I do to Windows PCs when I first get them to make them feel a little more clean, a little more modern. Uh, because remember, Windows is a legacy operating system. Windows 10 is just stuff that's been built on previous versions of Windows. So there's lots of old stuff in here that I like to remove and there's lots of tweaks I like to download and install that make the Windows user experience feel a little more up to date. So this is essentially a clean version of Windows 10. This sort of video tutorial will work if you have a version of Windows that you've been using for some time as well. Um, it's all the same really, just follow along and don't do things you don't want to do. There's going to be some choices I make in this video that a lot of people won't agree with. That's fine, you don't have to follow every step. I'm just showing you what I do to modernize and clean up the Windows 10 user experience. So let's start with the taskbar. To me, the taskbar is unnecessarily cluttered out of box. We've got things like this search bar down here, which is unnecessary. We don't need a search bar, so we can and hide it, we can show the search icon. But in fact, we can go a step further than that and just simply hide the search icon entirely because we don't need it. We can get access to search just by typing into the start menu. We still get it like that. We don't need the dedicated button. But I understand if you're somebody who prefers having the main button, you can keep that there if you like. But personally, for me, I like to remove it. I like to have start, I like to have Cortana, and I like to have the task view button. I know many people don't use Cortana, so it makes sense for them to also hide the Cortana button as well. In fact, why not hide all of it? If you really want a simplified experience, you can hide every single one of those and just have the start button. But like I said, for me, I prefer having the Cortana button and the task view button there. Up next, just go through and pin and unpin things that you do and don't use on the taskbar. I know a lot of people like to just pin everything to the taskbar for convenience, but if you want a, if you want a minimalist setup, uh, just pin the core applications, the things you use every day, any sort of accessories and other things that you don't use all the time can then just be put into a folder in the start menu, for example. Um, so for me, it's these four apps here. Everything else can, is happy in the start menu. The next thing I like to do is just hide the desktop icons. Just doing this can make the experience feel way cleaner, um, especially for somebody who has 100,000 different um, shortcuts on your desktop. Now, if you use your desktop as like a scratch board for in progress documents and whatnot, then hiding the icons doesn't make much sense. But if you're somebody who just uses it as a dumping ground for application shortcuts, just hide them all, delete them if you want, and then hide it. I just prefer having a clean desktop wallpaper here because um, it just looks nicer in my opinion. Now, moving on, let's clean up the system tray. The system tray is a very legacy part of Windows. It's been around since 1995 with Windows 95, believe it or not. It has come a long way since then, but it's essentially the same thing. We have our date and time. We have a bunch of system applications sitting in the system tray that honestly shouldn't be there. In my opinion, the system tray has needed an overhaul for years, but Microsoft refuses to give it to us because there's a few people who rely on its legacy um, feature set, unfortunately, but we can do our best here to try and modernize it. So let's begin just by hiding things. To do that, just drag up the things you don't want like that, and they'll go into the overflow menu. And um, regarding the system icons here, it will depend on your preference. For me, I don't need OneDrive here, and I probably also don't need the volume flyout. Now, again, depending on who you are, you might prefer having those icons there, which is perfectly fine. You can keep them, but we're trying to simplify the system tray as much as possible. Now, what I also like to do to the system tray is customize the data and time format to make it look a little more modern. Don't get me wrong, the current format looks fine, I guess, but I think we can do better. So if we open Microsoft Edge here and search for an app called T-Clock on GitHub, We can download this from a user called White Tiger. We scroll down, go to releases here, press on 2.44 release candidates or the latest version that comes up at top, press on tclock.zip and download this file. Um, before we actually run it, however, I like to create a folder in say the documents folder or even just in the C drive, let's do it here, called um, tweaks. So these have a safe place to run in the background. So let's go back to our downloads folder here and extract T-Clock into its own folder. 
and then before we continue on with that move the t-clock folder into the tweaks folder in the c drive now to get t-clock running we just press clock 64 here and this little window will pop up in the corner now you may notice that the format of the date and time in the system tray has changed a little bit so from here we can customize the format of the date and time in the system tray now you can follow step by step or you can do your own thing it's entirely up to you but for me i like to go to time format go to advanced clock format enable this tick box and change the format entirely. So here's what I like to use. I like to use MMM space D, then a few spaces, then H colon NN space TT. And you'll notice on the system tray there, we now have a very simplified looking date and time. Um, if you don't understand what I just typed, there's a help document here that you can click on, which will give you an overview of all the different codes you can put into the format box, which will provide you with different date and time formats and whatnot. So make sure you give that a read if that's something you want to dive into. From here, we move over to the clock text box and change the font. I prefer using Sego Semi Bold. And then if we need to, we can also change the font size. Uh, depending on your screen resolution, you might have to do, to do that to make it seem more at home. What do we think, nine or 10? I think maybe 10 looks nice. Then we could also uh, just add another space there to make it seem a little more at home. Is that too many spaces? Uh, I think that's okay. And there we have it. So that's what our time and date looks like now on the taskbar. Actually, is 10 too big? I can't tell on this UI. <laughs> Don't, 9 is too small. We really need a 9.5, but unfortunately that's not possible. All right, we'll keep it at 10 for now. So there we go. We can also adjust the width. So if you're still finding that it doesn't look at home in the system tray, you can actually change the uh, the positioning of the entire widget using these commands here. So yeah, you'll have to mess around with it to get the exact format you like. But I think we've got what we want here. Maybe one more. There we go. Then we want to go down to about and uh, make sure T-Clock starts at startup press OK. And now we have a cleaner looking system tray with our updated date and time format. I think it looks really nice. And of course, it still functions exactly the same. I can click on it and now I'll open up the calendar fly out here. And we can even right click on it to get access to a whole bunch of different areas in the system if that's what you want which is a nice addition as well. Uh, but we're still not done with the taskbar. There's a couple of more things I like to do. Up next is a tweak called taskbar X, which we can also get from GitHub. So if we just type taskbar X GitHub, and download this from Chris and 1998. Go down to releases, uh, click on the latest one available, press on release.zip, and then also do the same thing we did with T-Clock by moving its extracted folder into our tweaks folder in the C drive. So let's uh, quickly copy you and paste you into tweaks. We can then scroll down and launch the program Taskbar X here. And what this will do, we can press run anyway, it's safe. Uh, we'll center the pinned and running apps on your taskbar. Um, and it also has a couple of customization options as well. So if we click on Taskbar X configurator here, this will launch our settings app, app for Taskbar X. And from here, we can customize a whole bunch of things. So we can change the style of the taskbar. So if you don't like the default theming of the taskbar, you can change it to transparent, which will just simply hide the taskbar, but keep the elements of the taskbar on display. Um, we can also change it to a blur effect, which just sort of removes the accent color, but keeps um, the blur effect. So if I move this window below the taskbar here, you'll see that it still blurs, um, similar to Windows 7 almost. Uh, and then we also have acrylic, which is similar to default, just without um, your system accent color there as well. So you can still see the taskbar a little bit here, uh, but for now I'm gonna keep it at default because I prefer that. We've also changed the animation of things. So when you open up an application that isn't pinned to the taskbar, like Microsoft Store here, you'll see things move over ever so slightly. We can do that again here with, say, photos. Things will just budge over. Um, you can change the animation of that. Now, I haven't really noticed much of a difference between all of these different animations, but hey, you might. So I definitely recommend looking through it. You can also change the animation speed. So if you actually want it to be faster, you can say make it 50 ms. Press apply. So now when I open up an app again, the animation will be quicker or we can make it slower. We can make it 500 milliseconds, which uh, if you're somebody who prefers the spectacle of animation, you can do that and it will move over slowly. I actually like that. So I'm actually going to keep it at a longer animation speed. I know some people hate uh, animation speeds uh, being long, but 
hey, in this case, I think it looks nice. We can also change the position of the centered icons here. So if you're somebody who has a long system tray, which in this case we don't, because we just cleaned it up, um, you can make sure that the taskbar pinned icons remain centered between all of the buttons over here on the left and all of the buttons on the right. So I actually prefer just leaving this off because I like having the taskbar icons pinned directly in the middle regardless of the system tray and stuff but you can compensate for that if that's what you want to do. Now if we come down to extra here there's a bunch more different options you can choose from. If you're somebody who's using multiple monitors there's a couple of options you can choose here. Only send to primary taskbar or secondary taskbar. We can change the refresh rate and a bunch more stuff. Click on apply and that's all good. So we now have taskbar x running and now our taskbar is looking very very modern in my opinion. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good so far, but we're still not done. There's still more we can do to customize Windows 10. And the third one is with an application called Power Toys, which is also on GitHub, funny enough. If I could type GitHub, there we go. So if you come in here, go down to releases and install the latest release at the time. We're going to install Power Toys. This is an actual installer, so we don't need to use our tweaks folder here. Give that a second to scan for viruses. Press on Power Toys and install it. We can get access to a whole bunch of tweaks and stuff. Now I've done an entire video on Power Toys that you can watch by clicking on this card up here. Uh, but really what we're downloading it for today is the search UI that it provides because we've hidden the start bar search UI um, and that's because we're going to install Power Toys as Search UI, which I think is a little bit better and cleaner and faster. So give this a second to install. So now we have Power Toys running. You can check by going into the system tray overflow and seeing this icon, Power Toys. If we click on that, it'll open up this program here. Make sure Power Toys Run is enabled. But we can customize um, the shortcut we use to enable it. By default, it's set to Alt Space, which I think is fine. And we can also change the maximum number of search results, I think. Uh, six will be fine for this demo. And now when we press the Alt key in space, we should get this UI for searching. And this will allow us to run any program or find any document on our system quickly and easily using a modern interface. So if I want to search for Notepad, I can type Notes and then we get Notepad or Sticky Notes, OneNote for Windows 10, etc., etc. I think this UI looks really nice. So that's what we're using Power Toys for. There's a whole bunch of different tools and Power Toys that you can use. Again, we have a whole video dedicated to this program that you can check out. The shortcuts guide is really nice. If you press and hold the Windows key, we'll get an overview of all the different shortcuts you can use on Windows 10 um, in the current screen you're on, which I think is great. And there's, again, a whole bunch of other stuff. There's a few things we don't need, I think. Like we don't need the image resizer, we can turn that off. We can also turn off the keyboard manager. We can turn off power rename, it's unnecessary for what we want. Um, and if you want, you can also turn off fancy zones or we can have it on, it's entirely up to you. Fancy zones just allows you to have a bunch of grids that um, gives you easier access to managing the format of Windows. So when I hold the shift key, I can actually pin things in different areas on the screen. If I let go here, that will now pin over there. But again, if that's not something you want to use, that's fine. You can actually disable it. And for this demo, we will. But if that's something you want, by all means, keep it on. That's entirely up to you. So that's what we've done so far, but we're still not done. There's still more things I like to do to Windows 10 to simplify and declutter the experience. Now, the next one's going to be very controversial. Trust me, I know, but I do it for good reason. I go down to the Windows Accessory folder. I right click on Notepad and I click Uninstall. Don't panic, there's a reason for this and I promise it will make sense in just a second. But for now, we're gonna quickly uninstall Notepad. Goodbye, Notepad. We saved a full 700 kilobytes doing that and I think it's worth it. But no, the real reason I do that is because I like to install the Microsoft Store version. Now, I know lots of you are rolling your eyes at the Microsoft Store, but the reason I do this is because the Windows Store version has an updated icon. <laughs> and we're all about aesthetics here at Windows Central. So I like to have the Store version of Windows Notepad because it has the new modern icon. And the, the application is exactly the same. If anything, it might have a couple of more features because it's updated more often than the built-in version of Windows 10. I think that's the case. Um, but this is going to be the new default eventually anyway. You're just getting ahead of the curve by doing this. So once we've done that, as you can see here, we now have Notepad installed in our start menu and it's back in the Windows Accessories folder. So it's still there. So if you want to use it, you can. And now if we open it, we have the new icon down here and we can go to 
about Notepad. Same old Notepad, just with a new icon, and it works as you would expect. So don't worry, we didn't get no, we didn't delete Notepad for long. It's still here, and it's still the best note-taking application that has ever existed. Uh, on the subject of that Windows Accessories folder, there's a lot of things in here that I just don't use. And luckily, you can actually get rid of most of it, including Internet Explorer. If we right-click Internet Explorer and press Uninstall, uh, we can actually uninstall it from this UI, which I think is great because I don't use Internet Explorer, as I'm sure you don't either. And it's taking up 11 megabytes on our hard drive. So uh, let's delete it right away. We can also delete most of these legacy programs, including Microsoft Paint. Now, I don't do this, but if you're somebody who really wants to declutter all of the, the legacy programs, you can do that from here. So if I uninstall Paint, it will go away, and obviously a reboot is required here, but since we have Paint 3D installed, do we really need Legacy Paint? Of course you can do this the other way as well, if you don't want Paint 3D, you can uninstall that and keep the Legacy version of Paint. Uh, and in fact, can we actually undo this? No, we can't. Let's restart and then reinstall Paint just to show you what else we can do. So we're back into Windows here. If we go into the Windows Accessories folder, you will see that yes, Paint is gone. Um, but we can bring it back quite easily just by going into apps here, go into optional features, add a new feature and searching for paint again. Microsoft Paint, a full 3.72 megabytes, install it. There we go, once that's done, paint should be back in the Windows Accessories folder just where it was before, there it is. Now the reason I did that is because if you're somebody who likes to go the other way, for example, like uninstalling uh, Paint 3D, you can do that. And in fact, you can actually elevate Paint to being in the main apps list rather than buried in the apps in the Windows Accessories folder here. To do that, we just right click on Paint, go to More, press on Open File Location, uh, copy the, uh, the shortcut, and then just paste it in here instead. Press Continue. And now Paint should show up in the main apps list rather than in the Windows Accessories folder. So if you're somebody who wants to do that, you can. Um, and I think it looks pretty nice. Now again, back to the installing, uninstalling legacy stuff. We've uninstalled Internet Explorer. We can uninstall all of these other things if you don't use them, which I usually do, but it takes a little while. So um, for this video, we don't, but let's pretend we did. Now, before we wrap things up, I'd like to take a quick second to thank this video's sponsor, ExpressVPN. We're all at home using the internet more than ever. So it's important that you protect your privacy when browsing the web. ExpressVPN is a super easy premium VPN service that works across Windows, macOS, iOS, Android and more. Use ExpressVPN to access region restricted web pages and video streaming services and keep your browsing history private, all without slowing down your internet. It keeps your IP address hidden and with 24 hour support, over 3000 servers worldwide and no bandwidth limits, you can use ExpressVPN whenever and wherever you need it. You can get three months of ExpressVPN for free when you sign up for an annual plan using our link. To get started today, head to expressvpn.com forward slash Windows Central. That's expressvpn.com forward slash Windows Central. Links are in the description. Thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. So up next, what I actually do, surprisingly, is enable light mode. Now, I get it, dark mode is best mode, I, and that's true, but when it comes to light user interfaces, they do look more minimalist and clean. Uh, so if we enable light theme here, you'll notice that uh, T-Clock needs to be updated just a bit. That takes just a couple of seconds. We go to clock text and change the color of it to just dark button text. There we go. That should be fine. But I do this because, like I said, it just looks a little bit cleaner in my opinion. Um, I don't do this for every PC, of course, uh, but in this case, I think it looks nice. Now we need to update our wallpaper and there's a website called Wallpaper Hub that I like to use, which has a whole bunch of different wallpapers um, for us to choose from. Let's see if we can find a nice clean one here. Inspire, this looks nice. Download, let's see, download just 1080p will be nice. There we are, file save image as, we can save this to our pictures folder, press on save. Show in folder, set as desktop background. And now we have this wallpaper as our default, which I think looks nice. Now mind as you found this one, which I like more. So let's use this one instead. Uh, save this as an image, press save. Go back into our pictures folder here and set this one as the desktop background instead. There we go, I think that looks way nicer. 
there's still a couple of more things I like to do um, when I set up a new version of Windows 10. If I go into our file explorer here, you'll see that by default, it takes us to this sort of recents area, which can often get cluttered with things like nonsense file names and stuff and things we don't even need to open anymore like t-clock help um so i just like to set file explorer to open to um this pc by default if i press on this here press ok the next time i open file explorer it will take us to this ui which i think is much cleaner i also like to minimize quick access and just maximize this pc because quick access is more or less the same as this except it's not dynamic so you don't get nonsense folder names in there you just have the defaults here and they stay as this and they constantly stay like this so that's nice now going back into the apps list real quick um, i also like to uninstall a bunch of applications that microsoft just pre-installs that are modern applications like 3d viewer i never look at 3d things on my pc so i don't need it uninstall I also like to uninstall um, Mixed Reality Portal. This is unnecessary on anything that isn't a dedicated VR machine. Um, so yeah, just go through your apps list, check on things that you're not using and see if you can uninstall them. Not everything can be uninstalled, unfortunately, um, but most things can, I think, which is super nice. Now there's a couple of more things you can do. You can do things like hide the apps list in the start menu just by turning off this setting here and that will make things look even more minimalist and clean and you can readjust your tiles and make them look however you want them to look. The next tweak is really only for insiders. As you can see, I'm running a Windows Insider build here and I usually know what build I'm running. I don't need to see it on the desktop and there's a program we can download to hide that. It's called a Universal Watermark Remover. Let's see here. So this is an application from WinArrow, and it's a simple tool that just simply removes the watermark, and that's basically it. Um, it is just a sort of vanity thing that just makes things look a little cleaner on the desktop. You don't have to do this if you prefer having the watermark. You can, by all means, keep it there. Uh, let's go here, run UWD, install, press yes. It will sign us out. And you'll notice that the watermark is now gone from the desktop, which I think looks pretty nice. Now it looks super modern and super clean and everything is pretty awesome. If we re-enable re the apps list here real quickly, Microsoft is working on a minor UI change to the start menu um, that will turn it from looking like this into looking like this. Now, I think this looks much cleaner, but unfortunately, it's not something you can enable today. It's currently in testing in the Insider program, and it will ship at some point in the future. Um, but it is being worked on, so eventually your start menu will look like this, and I think it looks so much nicer. You see, it just looks cleaner and more minimalist, and it's everything a minimalist would want when they're customizing Windows 10 to look cleaner. So I'm very excited for this. Um, it's coming soon. Uh, but once it's enabled, let's actually just customize the start menu just a little bit because I know that's what we want to see. Let's hide the apps list. Let's um, show more tiles as well. And there we go. That's a start menu we literally just threw together in five seconds. But you get the idea. You can customize it in any which way you please and, um, and make it look super modern. So there you have it. That's a bunch of stuff you can do to your PC to make it look and feel a little more modern. Um... Again, you don't have to do everything that I've done in this video. You can pick and choose the bits you like and bits you don't like. I know not everybody will like um, downloading third-party programs to change things. That's fine. You don't have to do that. I know some people will absolutely hate uninstalling legacy things, which, again, is totally fine. You don't have to do that. Uh, but it's what I do, and I think it makes Windows look and feel great. That's everything I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.